and French. They combined for over 30 points a game. And for Boston College, they're missing a key man today. A starting guard, Jay Heath, that's 13 points a game. He's out with a fever and will not play. Julian Richwain is in for him. He can shoot it as well. BC's going to need a lot of help there. They that's get their a, first crack at it. That's a huge blow for Boston College, not having the freshman Jay Heath in the lineup uh, for multiple reasons, uh, in particular depth, Dave. Popovich on the low block, shot clock down to nine. As he'll turn and the hook shot is well short. French with his first rebound, maybe the first of many, the way he's playing. Uh, he is just uh, so dominant on the defensive and offensive glass. Really, it's just fun to watch uh, how aggressive he goes after every rebound. St. Louis with the ball. They're five and one coming off a win over the same Belmont team that beat Boston College by 15 a couple of weeks ago. And a reach in foul here. That'll be committed by Steph Mitchell. First one of the afternoon. Now the one loss to an excellent Seton Hall team one of the favorites to win the Big East along with Villanova. Miles Powell is one of the best players in college basketball, period. I had a chance to call him over this summer and the in Lima, Peru, they were over there and he was playing against pros. Uh, he is a guy who reminds me a little bit of Terry Deheer, who I used to have to chase back in the day at Seton Hall. Uh, he is a matchup nightmare, mid-range game. He's got NBA range. Uh, Seton Hall, they're a team to watch out for. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go on a deep NCAA tournament round. No doubt Bell at the line for his second one. That's been a real issue for the Billikens in the early going. Maybe a little too soon to draw a serious conclusion, but they're only 51% at the foul line, Huck, and in close games, that's going to cost them. Yeah, and Travis Ford, we spoke to him before the game. That was a concern for them. This missed opportunities, in particular, obviously, uh, the obvious close games, you can ill afford to leave points on the board. BC at 4-2, 1-0 and in the ACC. Conference win over Wake Forest in their season opener. Thornton will launch the jumper. That's in and out. And over the back foul, that'll be committed by Popovich, the 6'11 senior from Bosnia. And they can ill afford for him to be in foul trouble in a game like this. He's 13 and a half points a game. As you look at Travis Ford, fourth year at the helm for St. Louis, very familiar with the city of Boston as he spent three years at UMass. Fine player back in the day as well, too. Played uh, for those great Kentucky teams. and That's right, got to a Final Four in 1993 as a player for Kentucky. In eight years at Oklahoma State, they got a chance to check in with Marcus Smart of the Celtics yesterday as that one's going to be fumbled out of bounds and they'll give it back to B.C. And Jim Christian, the head coach for the Eagles, also some New England connections. He played at Rhode Island under Tom Penders back in the day. That program was outstanding over Tom Penders tenure. BC looking to get on the scoreboard here in the opening minutes. Playing at home a small crowd. Richway will let fire but too strong and you really do have to generate on both sides your own energy today. Yeah and we talked about that. You made a great point Dave. Uh, right before Thanksgiving students are gone. Uh, you don't want to check out before this game is over as we take a look at a nice steal uh, that time by Popovich shooting the gap in. That was a concern for Coach Ford. He said, look, we have to keep Boston College out of the transition game. How do you do that? Don't turn the ball over. Excellent job, though, by Boston College coming up with some transition offense. That'll go the other way. You know, they're 19 and 20 year old kids. It's the day before Thanksgiving. You know, they're going to be a little bit distracted. It's the coach's job and their duty. It can be very tough to do, as you know, to rein everybody in and say, give me these two hours. Well, I asked Coach Christian at shoot-around today. I said, well, you know, how's your Thanksgiving going to be? He's like, my Thanksgivings are always terrible because I'm always worried about what my team is going to do. Right. And just like you said, these 18, 19-year-olds, uh, their minds float at times. So that's uh, obviously part of the gig as a head coach. Wayne again, short. It's going to be a key one to watch, the 6'5 freshman who can stick the three at 15 points in that loss to DePaul. Shredding inside, and it won't fall for Jacobs. Demarius Jacobs, the 6'2 sophomore from Chicago. They'd like more offense from him. That one off the foot of Thornton and out of play. Derek Thornton, you may remember him from his Duke days playing for Coach K. That's where his college career started. Then he went to 
USC played a couple of years so BC is his third stop and this is a big stop for him in particular for Boston College the loss of Kai Bowman who's now starting uh, for the Golden State Warriors uh, the big question coming into the season who was going to replace his production the big pickup to get Thornton Aaron just into the game will launch and a misfire Popovich with a rebound right back to him in the corner and he goes over too quickly that's Chris Heron just into the flow so a chilly start choppy kind of as anticipated to our earlier point both of these teams have shot 34 percent beyond the three-point line so far so they're not exactly lighting it up beyond the arc the new three-point line and French tucking that shoulder that'll be an offensive foul says Teddy Valentine well this is excellent footwork by Popovich again he came up with the steal earlier and that's just a great individual defensive play as a big sliding your feet that's always key hedging on ball screens that time Popovich is doing a nice job sliding his feet that is foul number two on the man we talked about just as we came on the air Hassan French 15 points, 10 and a half rebounds a game, but number two, and he's on the bench. Yeah, nice job by Boston College again, attacking him and getting him out of the game and his production. Felder trying to muscle his way inside as he's denied. Hamilton will knock that one down. Hamilton from the corner of the 6 4 senior, and will drill that to put BC in front five to one. St. Louis looking for somebody on the offensive end to go to. Typically, it's Goodwin and French. Jimerson around and out. He comes in averaging about 10 points a game. But they are cold. They really are. And also, Boston College limiting them to one opportunity. Oh, great job. Popovich rolling inside. And that is going to mean a timeout for St. Louis. BC looking sharp early with a 7-1 lead. You talked about it, Dave. Energy. Right now, Boston College looks like the more energetic team to start this game off. together as we are celebrating Thanksgiving tomorrow and what a phenomenal experience uh, for these young men yes. to get on the road in a great city as you know very well because you're a college star here for BC the highlight of your career at Boston College BC to run a little bit Hamilton got a three-pointer off earlier and nailed that not this time Popovich he can hit it from beyond that arc too Thornton slicing in he'll draw the foul and he'll be at the line took a good hit but he is at the foul line looking for a three-point play and Dave you bring up a key point the reason why Thornton so open because Popovich's ability to knock down threes that time over hedge and then Thornton nice body control eyes were on the rim the whole time right here take the hit and his eyes never left the rim that is a great move uh, by Derek Thornton Sophomore Fred Thatch with the personal foul and Thornton to the stripe where he hits 70 percent came in averaging 16 points a game and he's the top assist man for BC the graduate real veteran presence out there for Boston College and they lead it 10 to 1 energy it's simple as that right now they're getting uh, stops and then they're getting out in transition they're playing with a lot more energy than st louis right now goodwin bouncing inside can't finish it though and now boston college in transition again hamilton on the baseline tough pass batted away and a steal and a reach in foul they'll get cj felder freshman from sumter south carolina for his first well on friday december 6 it's must see college basketball doubleheader Featuring the nation's top two teams right here on the ACC Network at seven. Number one Duke going to Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech. They're an early story. And then at nine, number two Louisville will be hosting Pitt. Both games available on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. You like Virginia Tech a lot. I really do. And you would think with what they lost, including their coach, uh, it would be a rebuild year. I had a chance to uh, see them last night in the Maui Classic. And uh, they look awfully good putting some... ACC teams on notice with the big win over Michigan State uh, they are not going to be an easy out and then you look at what happened at Duke on the road Stephen F Austin How about that one I, I played my second college game down at Duke and it was not that easy at for me. Cameron indoor how about some of the names you were up against in that game Grant Hill 
talk Kristen Leitner, Bobby Hurley, but the guy who gave us a nightmare in that game, Billy McCaffrey. Billy McCaffrey. Billy McCaffrey. I, I vaguely remember Billy McCaffrey. He gave us the business, and it got ugly in the second half wow. with us starting four freshmen. But and you said, like, among or the loudest places you've ever played in? It was loud. I could barely hear myself coming out pregame to shoot around. It was that loud. One of the most difficult places to play in and win. Uh, hats off, though, to Stephen F. Austin. Oh. They looked really good last night. Tremendous. Weaver straight on. Will sink a two-pointer. Tay Weaver, he can shoot from range, too. The senior, he's 6 out of 13 beyond the three-point line. That was a 2 and a 10-3 lead for BC. Boston College getting penetration to getting inside. Knocked away by Felder on near midcourt. Shot clock down to 12. Felder, another freshman for the Eagles. Shot clock to 7. Thornton putting on the brakes, and he knocks in two. And that's a nice job by Boston College being patient. And right now, Dave, I think ball fakes against this St. Louis defense is going to be key for Boston College. They're being very aggressive in the passing lanes. That shut down Jimerson. Very good shooter. And that's a three on target for Gibson. Jimerson, who had 25 against high point, he can get it rolling. And that's a beautiful skip pass that time. No help by Boston College. That's a wide open look. Thorn again on the drive. Boy, that's a tough shot. He'll bank in two to make it 14-6. And out of bounds off Boston College on the other end. Back to that skip pass you were talking about. Yeah, this is beautiful execution on the offensive side. Not a lot of that early on in this game for St. Louis, but right here again, draw the defense. That's three defenders. Beautiful cross-court skip pass, and that's a wide open look. And Thornton, I got to check whether or not he's right-handed or left-handed. That's twice now uh, he's been able to take the hit. Excellent body control again. That's not an easy shot, and he's making them look easy with the left hand. Weaver, senior from Louisville. Can't connect there, and a rebound by Boston College. Hit it come again. BC 4 and 2 coming in. Eagles have to do it without the guard. Winston Tabs will miss the entire season. There's Popovich with authority as he stuffs in that basket to make it 16 to 6. And the reason why that happens, Hassan French on the bench. Well, they don't have any presence on the offensive glass, and then obviously his presence as a shot blocker, not in the game, allows Popovich to get to the lane uncontested. Thatch with a misfire. We talked about as Hamilton steadies and fires, and that's in and out. How important Hassan French is in every phase of the game for St. Louis, but saddled quickly with two personal fouls, the question is, do you bring him back before halftime? Well, I think you don't want this thing to get out of hand. Obviously, two fouls, you don't want him to pick up his third. But uh, the way Boston College is getting to the basket uncontested, uh, certainly you don't want this thing to stretch out uh, to double digits. Now Perkins with a pretty drive, the junior, who is the all-time leading scorer at Southwestern Illinois College, averaging 26 point, points a game at junior college. Let's see if he can do it here at Division One. Bounce speed and a kick on that play with 11-17 to go here in the first half. Well, Nick Popovich, knowing French is on the bench, being really aggressive, going to the basket. Uncontested dunk right now, Boston College with the lead. No question, Huck. Now, BC 14-7, they've outscored St. Louis since he picked up foul number two. And they're a plus three in rebounding. Again, without him in the lineup, uh, he does so much for them, obviously, on the defensive glass, and uh, they definitely need his production back in the game, but uh, certainly not a good sight if you're a St. Louis fan. Hassan French on the bench with two fouls. Derek Thornton, quick start for Boston College, seven points, and Popovich, as you've said, is taking advantage of French being out. He has six points. He has the ball now. Quickly, it's a fast step tried for the other side of the iron. He'll draw the foul. Hit on that play with 11.08 to go in the first half here at BC and the foul on Collins. And you look at the numbers right here, Derek Thornton, really a nice surprise for Boston College. His offensive production and the recognition, again, realizing Hassan French on the bench, that's where the leadership comes in. Don't force up jumpers. Go down low in the post where you have the advantage. Watch out, watch out. Uh, last year, talking about Thornton, 
He was sixth in the Pac-12 in assists. So he's a guy, as mentioned, who's been around. And he's played at Duke and USC and now here at Boston College at the end of his career already with a degree. It's an interesting path he's taken. And that's uh, really the name of the game now. Uh, with a lot of college players, you look at the transfer portal, uh, guys are at multiple schools now more often. I think the biggest thing, though, he brings to Boston College experience, in particular on the road. Uh, he's already been in these ACC battles uh, when he was at Duke. Jim Russo with a contested shot. It's going to be a traveling violation on the freshman, Rishwain. They really like how he can shoot the ball, not necessarily today he's been chilly, but as Jim Christian says, he's a high level and elite shooter. And they, they need him out there to stretch the D, uh, but both coaches are uh, unhappy with the inconsistency, in particular turnovers, uh, by their respective teams. And it's very tough underneath. Big rebound in amongst the trees. That's going to be a jump. And they'll have it on a possession. Right here, nice job by Popovich. Shutting off any chance of him getting back into play. And then you got four Boston College players standing around. And now Rishwain get up there for what proved to be a jump ball with ten and a half minutes to go in the first half. And we got Teddy Valentine cleaning it up early. It's amazing. Uh, he was doing my games, Big East games, back in the early 90s. How about that? He has not changed like you. He has not aged <laughs> one bit. Well, I'm giving yeah. you some love early, man. Teddy, yeah, Jefferson straight on off the back of the iron. Teddy, ten final fours in what has been a long and distinguished career on the floor. Hamilton, nice fake to get himself open, but he can't drain it. You can't ask for a better look if you're Boston College. Wide open foul line jumper. Goodwin, he's really been off target in the early going. They've shut him down, but a turnover right to Perkins. And a reach in foul on Mitchell. Go against Boston College. This, by the way, the fourth meeting the Eagles have had with St. Louis, a one and two against him. It's going to be a second foul on Steph Mitchell. Yeah, and that's not a good one at all. He needs to let that go again to turn over, but then you compound it by fouling, and now you take your best rebounder for Boston College out of the game. So, yeah, the two best rebounders coming into Conti Forum today in early foul trouble. And thrown away, stolen by Felder. And they're going to turn it right back over. So we, we are seeing some of that, what we thought, that lack of fluidity on a day like this right in front of Thanksgiving. Travis Ford was very blunt. He said, listen, look, we are so inconsistent. We've shown flashes, uh, but then we'll put together a stretch where what we've seen the last three minutes, turnovers uh, and breakdowns on the defensive side. That really has been a story for both of these teams. Collins zips the pass into the corner. Jump shot. Won't fall there by Jacobs. Now, he's another guy who will shoot the three for St. Louis, and he can get cooking. He's had a 20-point game. They need him to be an offensive force. Rishwain off the fake. Here's Thornton. 17-8 BC. And that's going to be a carrying violation. So another turnover. We've had a bevy of those really on both sides the last several minutes. Yeah, Teddy's going to call that every time. I think a palm the ball. No question about it whatsoever. Go down the other way. And again, another turnover. Uh, it's, again, when they've been on Boston College, they've had some nice opportunities and shown some flashes of excellent offense. Uh, this last two minutes, though, really sloppy uh, by both teams. A combined 12 turnovers in a game. Only 10 made field goals. Though BC will certainly take it. As the score stands now, under nine minutes to go and a half. Goodwin, quick step. He'll fire it outside, but that's going to be an offensive foul before the shot. And BC has sucked up a couple of those here. And they've done an excellent job defensively. They've been active, which got them out in transition early. Then right here, good team defense. Rich Wayne stepping over. Excellent call by the ref, uh, standing there the whole time. Uh, that's how you play team defense, come up with an extra possession for your team. Really good crew here. We mentioned Ted Valentine, 10 Final Fours. Brian Dorsey, the 2016 Final Four. Lee Cassell, also an outstanding official. And that will go the other way. St. Louis ball here. And Jim Christian, sixth year at BC, a record of 66 and 102 
in his stay here on Chestnut Hill. And I think really what has hurt him, all fairness, uh, no Jerome Robinson, Kai Bowman, those guys would be in their senior years, uh, arguably one of the best backcourts in the country, not just ACC. Uh, those two guys are playing for a paycheck uh, in the NBA, and uh, they certainly miss uh, those two guys' production. Well, finally, a little offensive juice out of Jordan Goodwin. Nice play there on the reverse for two points. They need a lot more of that. Felder in close will draw the contact as he hits the deck. BC up seven. And back to the St. Louis bucket on the other end. Nifty play by Jordan Goodwin, the junior. And here's the flash of the good St. Louis right here. As you said, really nifty play. Nice ball movement, little spin, and that's great body control. St. Louis trying to put together a run. Team to become bowl eligible. Both games right here on ACC Network. Now BC with a 17-10 lead on St. Louis. C.J. Fellow, the freshman, solid score off the bench his first year. That's the first foul shot he has missed this season. He's now eight for nine. So the million dollar question right now is Hassan French, the Billiken star, 15 points, 10 and a half rebounds a game. You gave that monster stat line he had against Belmont. I mean, that hasn't happened in college basketball in about a quarter century. But can you afford to put him back on the floor before halftime? Well, I think if this thing gets to double digits, he has to put him back in the game before uh, this first half is out. But uh, right now, they're kind of hanging around uh, down seven, but uh, not having his production, we'll take a look at Hassan French. Uh, he put up one of the great stat lines, something we have not seen in college basketball in quite some time. 24 rebounds, 21 points, and seven blocks against Belmont. Dominant performance. Oh, by the way, just for good measure, he can pass it too. He had four assists in that game. Uh, that is the definition. And we throw this term out there a lot, uh, do a little bit of everything. Uh, that's doing a little bit of everything. Uh, he really was just dominant in that win. And Travis Ford told us that the man he was defending shot two for 14 against him. So, yeah, that's every that's checking every box in that victory over Belmont. Very hard fought win. They they held a good Belmont team to 55 points. Been a bit of a different tale here in Boston here this afternoon, the day before Thanksgiving. St. Louis struggling to score, and BC's had the better of the play. And I like the changeup by Travis Ford. They're going to a 2-3 matchup zone. Now, we talked about this. Boston College has struggled shooting the ball from the perimeter. See if you can keep them out of the lane. Thornton's little fall away won't go. And now the Billikens want to go. Goodwin trying to get into the flow of the offense. And Teddy Valentine holds a play with a man down on the other end. And that is Hamilton. Jared Hamilton, the 6'4 senior from Charlotte. And you see him banging on the floor in pain. He took a nasty spill on the other end. And that's when Teddy Valentine held it up to attend to the injured player. Yeah, and he slammed down his hand. Got to be careful on the floor. Really couldn't tell. A lot of players around. Yeah, he got bridged. That's a dangerous play right there. And mm. uh, that right there, reason to be upset. Again, you got a guy up in the air now. Again, all fairness, he's trying to block out. But I think when you lower your back, it's not blocking out and standing vertical. It's when you lower your back right there. Yeah, see, if a guy's standing up straight, then that doesn't happen. But when you start lowering your back and arching, that's a dangerous play. Very fortunate. Uh, he it was not more serious than it looks to yeah. be. I think you're absolutely right. He did hobble off the court. He limped away, and he's grimacing right now. We'll get you an update on Jarius when we can. On Jared, his brother Jarius, also on the team here at BC, 6'8 sophomore. Collins has that one knocked away. Thornton went for the quick dish into the paint, a scramble for that. On the line, it'll stay right here for Boston College. Leading by five. Well, that's excellent transition defense that time by St. Louis breaking up a three on two. Looked like they were going to get a high percentage shot out of it and almost came up with a steal. So BC to put it in. 
Popovich for Thornton. Those have been the star scorers here in the first half of the Eagles. Thornton trying to use the screen by the big fella. Here's Heron. Shot clock is seven. Aaron on the spin move. Left it short. Just couldn't finish, but it was a beautiful move to get there. Yeah, that was a highlight move right there. Spin move off the one-on-one -on, -one on the wing. And as you said, did everything except finish the play off. Bell handing off for Goodwin. Jimmy Bell's a great story, isn't he? The freshman who at one point weighed 350 pounds, and people were looking at him as an offensive lineman. Look at him hit the deck there to keep that one alive. Perkins in close. He drops in, too. Looking like a linebacker right there on the ground. Great agility. We can't call him big fella anymore, and you said uh, that is a great body transformation uh, that he went through. 350 pounds down well below uh, the 300 mark. Yeah, he's closer to 270 right now. That's an amazing story. And before the shot, no basket there, foul. Jimmy Bell hitting the deck here, the freshman from Saginaw, Michigan. And this is just great hustle right here. These little hustle plays, Travis Ford talked to us before the game. They weren't doing a lot of that early on in the season. He wants to see more of that, those hustle plays that lead to extra points. How about this transformation now? This is, you know, a love for basketball. He went away from football. A lot of people thought it'd be an old lineman dropping over 80 pounds. That's tremendous work ethic and determination to do that. All jokes aside, hats off to this young man. Oh, yeah. We talked about this, the, the health benefits of that. Uh, but more importantly, uh, the improved play. Uh, you can see it. Uh, his stamina, uh, his agility, and footwork uh, really have just skyrocketed with this transformation. You know, and I think you make an important point, too. Athletically, obviously, it does him a world of good. He's a lot more versatile, mobile, all of those things. He's better on his feet as Perkins launches and hits a three. But, you know, it's the lifetime benefits for a guy like this. He's added, like, 20 years to his life. Uh, you said it best. Can't say it any better. Uh, really, just a phenomenal job by him and also the training staff working with him. Uh, to go through this transformation. Well, he's helped St. Louis get right back in the game. They have cut the BC lead to two, and Boston College has it knocked away with 5-11 on the clock. 19-17. BC was a little bit comfortable for a while after French had to leave in foul trouble. But now St. Louis right back in it, down by two. Number three, Clemson. Looking to go 12-0 against in-state rival South Carolina. Currently eight bowl eligible teams from the ACC could be 10 after Saturday. Wow. Clemson certainly to pick it a little. Shot clock down to nine. And off for Thornton and a foul on St. Louis. That was with seven on the shot clock. That'll be number two on Thatch. Well, Dave, if you're Travis Ford and St. Louis, you have to be pleased that you're only down two in this game. And Hassan French, your star player, has been on the bench, really, it seems like, uh, for the last 10 minutes. And uh, certainly, uh, we were talking about it. When and how long does he keep him on the bench? But right now, uh, the backup unit getting it done, keeping this game close. Well, BC with a key man in foul trouble as well. That's Steph Mitchell, the junior. Six points, nine rebounds a game. He is back in now for Boston College, so both head coaches giving you a different feel as far as how to use a guy saddled with two this early in a game. And by the way, an update on Jared Hamilton. We saw him go down for BC earlier on the floor, right hip contusion, so he is questionable as far as his return to the game. That's gonna be a key storyline as we get deeper into this game. Perkins a determined drive, and it's tipped out of bounds off the Eagles, who lead at 21-17. Well, you get the sense that the energy for St. Louis uh, really has changed the momentum of this game. They've been more active now. We talked about Boston College was the more aggressive team to start off the first half. Uh, in this last five-minute stretch, it seems like St. Louis has matched that intensity and then some. The Billikens were a veteran, experienced unit last year, and it showed they won 23 games and a spot in the NCAA tournament. They fell in the first round of Virginia Tech, but 
just getting into the tournament was an amazing accomplishment. They had to win four games in four days in the A-10 tournament. And that's going to be a charge, so wave off the basket. No hoop there. And foul number three on Steph Mitchell. And he was just in the game a couple of minutes. All these plays add up to wins. Uh, hustle plays, taking charges, getting back in transition, identifying a where you want to be. That is excellent transition defense by St. Louis. And there's Mitchell back to the bench. So he was not on the court very long in this first half. He certainly won't be. He played 33 seconds. Some guys understand how to play with two fouls. I know when I got to, I was not going to foul again. I wanted to stay <laughs> out on the court. I was playing that Ole defense. Uh, I definitely uh, knew how to do that, but certain guys are still aggressive. Aaron, he goes airborne, and that's going to be an offensive foul. So on back-to-back -back transitions, BC with the charge. Coaches have a good sense of what their team is doing well and what they're not doing well. Travis Ford, when we asked him, what do you think of your team? He said, we need more of this. Uh, we're not playing aggressive and smart on defense. Right now, they are doing both of those things, and the big reason why, they're back in this game. And for Heron, you know, it was all systems go, full speed ahead. Probably a pass would have been a better idea there. On the back down, Bell, short, rebound batted away and stolen by BC. Boston College has lost their momentum, trying to get it back. Heron from the wing, he sticks a three. They needed that one. They did, and it's a breakdown by St. Louis. Again, he's been struggling, but that's a wide open look. Heads up play again by Thornton. And one of the few times in this last five minute stretch, poor transition D by St. Louis. Bell on a high post. Jimerson will drive it. He's sealed. That's going to be a traveling violation. And more good D by Boston College. Chris Heron Jr. trying to make up for the turnovers. Boston College on a run right now. Heads up play by Derek Bullies is there, but right I don't want to give out too much, but uh, certainly a lot of interesting storylines in college basketball. I'm going to stick with that theme. Yeah, and there are some big upsets that have already come and gone here. We mentioned the Hokies beating Michigan State 71-66. Duke Blue Devils, just in case you missed that in overtime, falling at Cameron Indoor in overtime. Wow. I mean, look, I think that's the story of college basketball this year. There is not one dominant team. Uh, like last year where you felt, okay, a Duke, uh, a, a Michigan State, uh, they were just so good that uh, you had to play a perfect game to beat them. I don't think there's a team like that uh, in college basketball, and obviously Stephen F. Austin proved that uh, last night. Uh, Bell with a great recovery to come from behind and block the shot of Popovich. Perkins trying to thread inside, but that's a travel. But Bell with a tremendous block on the other end there a moment ago. Yeah, excellent recovery right here. Again, nice little head fake by Popovich. And then the improved conditioning. That's a great recovery uh, by Bell. Looking to move the feet. He would not have been able to make that move a year ago. Great job, again, to the training staff transforming his body. And uh, you can see the improved agility uh, by that young fella. 80 pounds off yep. over the offseason. And looks fantastic. Thornton with a kick out, long jumper on the way, and that's going to be off the iron. No good by Hamilton. The long one's not falling for either side so far in the first half. 24-17 BC and a foul. They'll get Hamilton for that personal. His first. And not a good foul at all. Again, you have a St. Louis team that's struggling to score the ball. Uh, don't put them. There's no need to foul them out that far. That's a really poor decision. You like the aggression, but... Uh, you have to understand time and also uh, whether or not you're closer to the bonus. A Weaver with a one and one. Senior from Louisville. That'll rattle in. Tay Weaver, grad transfer from Eastern Kentucky, where he averaged about 10 points a game and shot it very well beyond the three point line. He's hitting 46% from the arc so far for the Billikens. Yeah, and he attempted uh, close to eight threes a game while he was at Eastern Kentucky. So, again, he's a volume shooter. And uh, back to the adjustment for Travis Ford. I like what he's done. I think their best defense has been the matchup zone. Uh, they've had problems keeping Boston College out of the paint when they've gone to man. Uh, they continue to stay in this 2-3 matchup. 
Now coming up on the two minute mark here at Conti Forum, Chestnut Hill. Malcolm Huckabee, Dave O'Brien with you. Thanks for joining us this day before the holiday. Popovich lets fly. Rebound picked off by the Billikens. Here they come again. And Weaver will set it up now for Travis Ford. In his fourth year as the head coach for St. Louis. Perkins dishing Jimerson. Contested. Bell with the rebound. That's deflected away. Weaver couldn't save it. It's out of bounds off BC with a minute 45 to go in a half. Yeah, great efforts that time. Heron getting it over on the post entry pass and then nice contest by Popovich. Bell getting after it. All players, both sides, really nice work. Good one off the inbounds and he'll drain the three. So St. Louis, as close as they have been here in the first half, down by two. Thornton trying to answer. Now an opportunity for St. Louis to actually forge into the lead right before the break. Bell on Popovich. Working hard, in close for two. That was a determined basket. Uh, he's been impressive uh, in this first half. Again, defensively solid. Offensively, when they've given him his opportunities, his footwork really has been impressive in this first half around the basket. Yeah, light on those feet, tied at 24. So under a minute to go, St. Louis fighting back from pretty serious deficit and some pretty ugly play early on from the wing. Heron can't connect. And now the Billikens hoping to have the lead going into the locker room at halftime. Here's a three, and that's going to be a round and out. Off target by Weaver. Eagles trying to recoup a little of their momentum. Hamilton to his left, and he will draw the foul. 28.6 to go in the half. We're going to take a look at a nice offensive possession by St. Louis. Again, set up by excellent spacing. Let the big fella operate, and then his footwork, nice turn over that left shoulder right here. Again, excellent patience. Waited to see if the double team was going to come. It did not come, and then a nice use of the body and footwork uh, by Bell, who has been impressive for St. Louis. So Hamilton at the line, the senior, who's bounced back from a hip injury here in the first half. He does get back on the floor. He was questionable after that contusion. So he's showing a lot of toughness to get back on there. 28.6 seconds to go in the half. And smooth at the line to make it 26 to 24 BC. And key huh? for St. Louis, you don't want to go too early. Do not want to give Boston College another shot on the offensive side. Nassan French, the best player on the floor for St. Louis, was barely on the floor in the first half. And yet St. Louis, despite the early hole, fought their way back. Goodwin shut down. Here's Perkins. He can't hit it. Time for a heave here for Thornton, but he won't get it off, and that's how it ends. First half, Boston College has the lead, 26 to 24 St. Louis. It's actually 24 rebounds, 21 points and seven blocks. Today, he has not scored in only three boards. Yeah, that's huge, not having him in the game uh, for this St. Louis squad. And I had to do a double take, too, when I looked at the final stats. You just don't see players put up numbers like that, 24 rebounds, 21 points, and, oh, by the way, let me throw in seven blocks. Dave, I don't think I had seven blocks in my college <laughs> career. <laughs> yeah. We're going we're to take a look. You know we can find all these things. Uh, BC at four and two. St. Louis at five and one. Still trying to figure out who they are. Just about everybody is in college basketball this early. When you see some of those upsets, you can figure out exactly why. But Thornton with 11 points, three for seven from the field. Nick Popovich at 6'11, three for six from the field. And we'll see if Jordan Goodwin really gets going, the talented junior for the Billikens. We were seeing. The officials, Teddy Valentine, Brian Dorsey, Lee Cassell, they were talking to him at halftime. What do you think they were going over? And it's interesting to see 
a, a veteran crew like this, they do an excellent job communicating what it is he might be doing wrong, what they need to look for in the second half. Yeah, I mean, you talked about it. I think Teddy Valentine sometimes gets a bad rap. I think he does a good job communicating off screen. And that time before half, as we take a look at Derek Thornton coming out, nice start for Boston College, communicating a player had an issue with a foul. He pulled him to the side. Half, here's what you did wrong. He went into a lengthy discussion. Player's like, okay, nodded his head. Yep. Let's go play some ball. That's the way you do that. Great communication from the officials. That one's going to be tipped up in NC Lewis with the basket. And Goodwin will get credit for that. He's got seven. Top score, 15.5 points a game. Also very good rebounder with eight a game for the Billikens. Well, at one point in the first half, Boston College was in the positive number and the, deep, um, the rebounding. Right now, St. Louis a plus five in the rebounding battle. That's a key number to watch in this game. On the baseline, tried the scoop shot. Popovich can't connect. So once again, St. Louis with an opportunity to tie the game or take the lead. And off for Collins. Here's Goodwin trying to make a move. Banging inside on Hamilton and banks in two. The to tie the game at 28. Travis Ford said uh, he reminds him a little bit of Marcus Smart, who was sitting here courtside uh, at this game, playing now for the Celtics. Uh, a bruising guard, excellent rebounder, but that's what he does best on the defensive side. Goodwin with the pick. Collins, nifty pass. He can get very creative. Goodwin off the fake. Got Popovich in the air. Here's the long jumper. Badly off target by Perkins. So St. Louis able to get there and tie up the game a couple of times. They did in the first half, too, but now they can take the lead, and they are going to. Hey. On the stuff. Jacobs. Bet Goodwin wanted a foul on the play. None forthcoming, but they do have the lead. Their first lead since it was one to nothing. And what Jim Christen's upset about is not the turnover, but there's only one guy getting back on defense, and that uh, right there, problematic big reason, though. St. Louis picking up the intensity on the defensive end. Since the opening seconds of the game, it's been a long road back. They had to do most of that without their best player, Hassan French. Who got the two quick fouls, but they're on top 30 to 28. And yeah, Dave, so often coaches talk about how you start a game and then starting the first five minutes of the second half uh, for Boston College. Right now, they need to continue to do what they did in that first half, not turn the ball over and let St. Louis get points off of turnovers. The hot hand for BC has been number 11, Derek Thornton. He has 13 points. Also has six rebounds. Hamilton off the screen. Popovich banging in close with a spin left hand no and you can see the momentum building here for the Billikens Collins running the point he's seven assists a game and a kick here with 17 18 to go Teddy Valentine doing some work during the timeouts and we talked about it earlier, how he was chatting with one of the players right before halftime, Jordan Goodwin. So the work isn't all done during live action. No, it isn't. And the veteran crew, we've talked about this uh, at the beginning. When you have a veteran crew like this, it's been a clean game, and they've done a nice job, I think, with their communication with the players and also coaching staffs. Goodwin will draw the foul. He's really getting active, but here's Teddy during the break with the coaches for St. Louis. Yeah, and you ask a question, you may not like the answer, but he's going to give you uh, what he's thinking. And I think uh, that's all you can ask for as a coach and a player. Uh, for me, when I played, uh, when you couldn't talk or communicate with the ref, uh, that always drove me crazy. I think the ones that are the best ones communicate with you. Certainly, in this game, really has not been an issue. I think the refs have done a nice job. Ted's like this, too. In fact, this whole crew is. What I've always appreciated is the officials who treat the kids like young men you know they're not fully formed professional athletes yet you know they're still learning so much about competition about themselves about how to be a great teammate all of those things well the key thing with him and any referee if you show them up uh, then they're going to treat you like a kid oh yeah <laughs> come at them a certain way then they will communicate with you and really nice to see i think it's something 
Uh, not too many people see often, but I think that communication during dead balls. Yeah. Popovich. Yes. Give him two to tie the game again at 30. He has nine. I like the move by Popovich going at French. Hassan French trying to get another foul on him. Don't settle for jumpers. Entry pass for French, and that'll drop in. His first basket of the game, his first points. For Hassan French came in at 15 a game. Jump shot from the wing, and that'll go in for Thornton as he will nail a three. Well, BC Saint, back up by one. Yeah, and St. Louis went back to that 3-2 matchup zone. I think Thornton, though, is the one guy you must identify if you're St. Louis. Too much airspace. Mitchell with the deflection. Pass back out for Thornton, and he will set it up now for the Eagles. Popovich, a beautifully run play for two. And that's where the experience of Derek Thornton comes in. Again, pulling the ball back out, not forcing a shot, getting into your set. Nice pick and roll play with Popovich. Beautiful dime. BC up 35-32, and that's going to be a blocking foul. 15.43 to go, and a foul on Popovich will be his third. Well, he started his career off at Duke to USC, now dropping dimes at Boston College, who's back on to all-time great stat lines of versus Belmont. 24 boards, 21 points, and seven blocks, but Nick Popovich going right at him, one of the premier shot blockers, and the A-10, and then Hassan French. Uh, this guy looks like he can play defensive line as well, too. A great body control, a great lower base there, and nice little soft touch with the jump hook. Uh, it has been a fun matchup to watch. So it has been. A Popovich back on the floor now. He has 11 points. Is he one of the more underrated players in the ACC? He really was. And last season, Dave, we talked about this. Uh, he was one of six players in the ACC to be in the top 20 in conference play in points per game, rebounds, and also field goal percentage. Guy oh. by the name of Zion was in that group yeah, as well. Heard of him. French will finish that. Another nifty feed there from Collins. Look at what you were chatting about. Top 20 in points per game, rebounds, and top 10 in field goal percentage. Just a handful of guys last year in all the college basketball to do that. And, and another guy we don't talk about that much, John Mooney, Notre Dame. Look, you average a double-double. I don't care what league it is, <laughs> but in the ACC, that right. guy averaged a double-double. I think we need uh, to talk about him some more. He's pretty good. Yuri Collins' is second foul. Popovich to take a breather. 15.08 to go. And a one-point game. Now, for a while in the first half, BC had the better of the play. That gives St. Louis playing their first road game of the year. A lot of credit to battle back the way they have. Thornton with 13 points for the Eagles, a step back jumper. No. French, tough rebound, very acrobatic rebound. You talked about how strong he is. He just showed it off right there, holding off two defenders. Goodwin lost the handle and kicks it back over to the Eagles. Around the back, Thornton, nice pass, but cannot finish. Hamilton could not get that to go down. Here's Collins in transition. Here's Jimerson, yes! He'll bury the three. Yuri Collins. Impressive freshman. Uh, you talked about it. Close to a double-double. That's a beautiful pass in transition. Head up. He has played a nice floor game for St. Louis this afternoon. Jimerson came in averaging 10 a game and 41% from three. Might be the go-to man down the stretch. Mitchell blocked from behind. Guess who? That was French who leads their program all time in blocks. Jimerson again. Rebounded by French. The kick out for Collins. Under 14 minutes to go here at BC. And a tight one. Jimerson with a jumper. No, the tip won't go by Goodwin. BC with an opportunity to tie or take the lead. Here's Hamilton. Got a good look. Could not knock it down. 
and you're right, Dave. You can't ask for a better look if you're Boston College in transition. Ball went inside to the paint, outside to a wide open three point shooter. St. Louis throws it away. Boston College trying to take advantage, trailing by two on their home floor. The Eagles 14 and 17 last season. They went 5 and 13 in the ACC. A lot of teams certainly struggled in the bottom half of the league against the conference. They were in that bottom six with losing records, whereas the top nine all had winning records and indeed had at least 20 wins. They're going to turn that one over. Thornton will argue his cause there with Ted Valentine, but to no avail. On the turnover. This is just a great individual effort, again, by Collins. I'm so impressed with him offensively right here, getting after it on defense. That's a great hustle play coming up with the turnover of versus the veteran, Derek Thornton. I wondered if it indeed wasn't off Collins in the end. Boy, that's a tough spin move in a basket. Outstanding move there by Goodwin, who has reached double-double status in this one. And he's done it pretty early. And you can see why Travis Ford said he reminds him so much of Marcus Smart. Big player, guy that can rebound, one of the better rebounding guards. And he is a bruiser going to the lane. The Eagles turn it over again. That seems to be happening a lot here in the second half. French to the paint. And knocked away. He wins it back. Goodwin with the miss. Another scramble for that along the baseline. The Eagles come away with it. St. Louis by four. Aaron, nice pass in close, but he can't hit it. Felder off target. So 11.48 to go. And a 39-35 lead. Working hard enough to lose their shoes in this one. Well, Jordan Goodwin. Travis Ford said he, Travis Ford and staff, they just love his motor and energy. Uh, last season, uh, he led all Division I guards in offensive rebounds, close to four per game. Does an excellent job crashing crash the glass. 6'3", 200-pound junior out of Centerville, Illinois. French will pass it off here to Collins. Trying to penetrate with a quick step, left it shy. Hamilton out of the pack. And throws that one away. A lot of turnovers for the Eagles here since halftime. Yeah, and consistency. Uh, again, they've shown flashes. Both teams really have been inconsistent in this game, but when they put together uh, their stretches where they play good, we've seen some good ball. The problem is they've had these stretches like this where uh, really careless with the ball. That's an unforced turnover right there in transition. Now five turnovers this half for the Eagles. Perkins will swing it. Here's Goodwin. That was in the cylinder and popped out. He was unlucky. St. Louis by four. Thornton around the back. Leads all scorers with 16. Hamilton trying to step in, and he's going to be walking with it. Traveling violation. 39-35, the Billikens. St. Louis losing four starters from last year's team. We talked about what they did in the A-10 tournament. They had to win four games, Huck, in four days to get an NCAA tournament bid. They were able to pull it off. Banked in on a smooth move by Goodwin, who's certainly been the hot hand. And that's the beauty of college basketball. Conference tournaments, anything can happen. And that's what I love about this game. You think about last night, Stephen F. Austin goes on the road. Nobody gives him a chance uh, to beat Duke and the number one team in the nation at the time. And uh, they shocked the world. So obviously anything is possible. And St. Louis proved that last season in the A-10 tournament. Collins on the drive, but a roll off the iron. Big rebound. Good one and one. And it is all St. Louis right now as they are on an 11-0 run and can add to that at the line. At the top, Dave, I said, what's the key in this game? Keep St. Louis off the offensive glass. They did it well in the first half, Boston College. Now in this run, uh, they have been relentless attacking the glass. That's a big time put back by Jordan Goodwin. Uh, Goodwin, like Hassan French, he's a double-double waiting to happen. He's already a double-double today for the second time this season. 
The second half, you talk about the glass. St. Louis just dominated, about rebounded BC since the break, 13 to six. And that's a missed assignment by Boston College. Again, you know the numbers. They don't lie as we take a look at an air ball, but Goodwin, uh, one of the best offensive rebounding guards in the nation. Now St. Louis looking like a team about to take command of this, and another and one. Goodwin hit again, and he'll be back to the line. Excellent find again. Uh, this freshman point guard, Yuri Collins, again, heads up game. He's played a beautiful floor game. That's a heads up play, bounce pass on point, and then Goodwin showing off the strength. Uh, you can see uh, the resemblance of Marcus Smart. They both are big guards. They're strong, they're physical, and then they will finish at the rim. Foul on Kamari Williams. Three point play for Goodwin. So St. Louis with their biggest lead of the day. Boston College, their last 11 possessions, they've shot 0 for 7 and turned it over four times. So the wheels have kind of come off of the Eagles at this point. Yeah, I think this is a big possession right here. Game at 11, 9.30 to go. Or they need something positive to happen on offense. Back out for Thornton, shot clock at 7. Trying to get inside that lane, and he's pushed. Foul against St. Louis, who 9.22 to go. And BC trying to crawl back in it now. Coming up next on the ACC Network, Virginia taking on Maine and then Louisville against Pitt. Louisville number two in the land. They have a big game coming up against Michigan on ESPN next week. Yeah, Jordan War right now, uh, I think the front runner for player of the year in the ACC. I know Cole Anthony is going to be in that discussion, but right now he has been a matchup nightmare. Rich Wayne with a misfire, rebound. For St. Louis, they are flat dominating on the glass. A 14-nothing run the last six and a half minutes for the Billikens. They arrived in Boston a little bit early to enjoy the city, see a Celtics game, taking some of the sights. The tip is up and in by French, and they have indeed taken command in a timeout by Jim Christian and the BC Eagles. Maybe a little late, 16 nothing run here for St. Louis. Well, you use the word, and it's the only word to use, dominant. I mean, they dominated this last five to 10 minute stretch, and a lot of it is hustle plays, and then on the offensive glass, uh, between Goodwin and French, uh, they are relentless uh, when they dive off of misses. If you don't turn and put a body on them right here, again, Popovich is going to help, Nobody slides over to put a body on one of the premier rebounders in the country. Forget about it, A-10, just the A-10, but in the country. This guy put up 24 rebounds in his last performance against Belmont, nine of them on the offensive side. He is the one guy you have to block out, and if you don't, he is going to make you pay. It's really interesting to me. We were talking about it with Travis Ford. He almost sounded like a coach, like so many coaches right now at this point in the season in November trying to find out what is the identity of my team. But he does know this. He's got a couple of terrific juniors in Goodwin and French who have the ability to lead them from behind. That's exactly what they did today. Yeah, and he talked to us about this as well. He said, look, our energy was not there. And when they play with energy like this right here on the defensive end, as we take a look at. Yeah, a technical foul on BC on their bench with 8.31 to go, and they're getting a little frustrated. And I think it was an assistant coach. I'm not sure if it was Jim Christian. He turned around and looked at his assistants. And again, veteran crew, we talked about this. They're consistent, but they're not going to allow you uh, to show them up. And uh, that's a crucial turn of events as you're trying to claw back into this game. Now you put St. Louis on the free throw line for two, and they will retain possession. Yeah, they are threatening to run away and hide. And I'm with you. I'm not 100% sure that's on Jim Christian. We'll check on that. It was certainly on the BC bench. But St. Louis now with a 50 to 35 lead. And of course, they have the basketball as well. With eight and a half minutes to go. And this one has flat gotten away from the Eagles. Yeah, this is uh, really danger time right now for Boston College. Down 15, 831 to go. But a credit St. Louis. 
Uh, and this guy with the ball right here, Yuri Collins, he has been great controlling pace and tempo uh, for St. Louis, and then he has set his teammates up uh, for some high percentage shots. Well, they got French back after the early foul trouble. That three is on the money by Jimerson. And now they're really off to the races on a 21-0 run. Jimerson off the bench with 11. A talented three-point man. Going to bounce speed and a finish by Popovich. That finally ends an incredibly long run. It was 21 zip by St. Louis. Yeah, it's been impressive. And energy, check, they've done that. But I think this guy right here. And then they've run some really nice sets. Their action off the ball. And then this guy, again, gets open for a three. That's a break for Boston College. But uh, off the ball on the opposite side, they do a lot of nice pin downs. Thornton lost it. Jimerson, they've got numbers three on one. They run the break. Back for Perkins. The tip, that won't drop. He continues to crash the glass and draws the foul. Now Boston College has only scored two points in about the last eight and a half minutes. And watch this action on the reverse side right here. Okay, boss. See about the score right now from the Eagles' point of view because St. Louis is flat taken over. They lead it. 53 to 37 with Perkins at the line connecting on the first one. Yeah, it was a dominant performance by them in this last five to ten minute stretch on the offensive glass. And then they've executed. Uh, they've run some nice sets uh, set up uh, by their freshman point guard, Dury Collins. He has been impressive all game. And I think the energy, the effort, but then their execution really has uh, put them in this big lead versus Boston College. Now, Collins, the point guard's great story, too, because he's a St. Louis kid. Right out of the backyard, he started St. Mary's Prep in St. Louis, the school's all-time assist leader. So he was a big star, very well known, and decided to stay home. And that's so key. Well, we talked with Travis Ford uh, before the game. He said, "Look, uh, his play today is going to be key on the road. This is our first true road test, and uh, he has answered that call. He has played wonderful for St. Louis." Now Perkins with another rebound. And that's where this game turned as much as anything. Would you agree on the backboards? We talked about it. Key number one in this game, can Boston College withstand of the relentless pressure that St. Louis is going to put on the glass? And first half, Dave, they did a great job. A uh, second half, though, they really have turned up the heat. And uh, again, no other word to use other than dominant yes. on the glass. Really got worn down in a big way. Jim Christian's team. Goodwin back to the line. He was pretty quiet, you know, the first 10 or 15 minutes of the game, Jordan Goodwin, but man, did he show up after that. 18 points, 13 rebounds for the slender 6'3", 200-pound junior. And 13 points in this half. And he came into this game with nine career double-doubles, and he's been impressive. Again, I just love uh, what he does. A lot of little things defensively, he's sound. He'll rebound. He'll get Collins for the reach in, slapping the ball away, but he'll commit the foul. That'll be number three on Yuri Collins. Now, he's a freshman playing for Travis Ford, who has a lot of flair. He's very creative with the basketball. They're trying to, you know, reel in some of that because some of those turn into unsightly turnovers, but you don't want to temper too much as creativity is really fun. And I also think... Credit Travis Ford and staff uh, getting him to understand this. Again, they get with him in the film room. Hey, this is a good play right here. He has been solid. I think more impressive, his defense on Derek Thornton. Again, he's done a nice job sliding his feet. Uh, that's not an easy task because Thornton has been playing some good ball yep. uh, for Boston College. Been the leading scorer today, just not enough. And under six minutes to go, St. Louis comfortably in front, looking to add to that lead. Perkins with a miss. You know, if you're just tuning in right now, you would think, well, probably Hassan French, if you're a St. Louis fan, he's played the whole game, and he's had a huge afternoon, but he barely played in the first half. He only played four minutes because of two quick fouls. They re really withstood BC during that time he was out, and here he'll come up with a steal. Yeah, you're right, Dave. Three minutes in that first half. He was a non-factor uh, after the monster performance he had versus Belmont, uh, where he put up the stat line of the decade it seems like 21 
points, 24 boards, and seven blocks. Tipped away in midcourt. Nine on the shot clock. Collins with the feed and a stuff by French. So he's closing in on a double-double despite not having played all that much. He has eight points, nine rebounds. And it's a 20-point lead for St. Louis. Again, their first true road game of the season. Coach Ford was eager to see how that would play. The tip is going to be up and good by Popovich. 57 to 39. He has 15 points. I think the head coach for the Billikens has to be pretty darn pleased with the way the second half has unfolded. Yeah, and I think if you're Jim Christian in Boston College, I think missed opportunity, really, uh, when French was out in that first half, as we talked about, the ability to extend a lead, uh, I think that hurt them. Yeah, they really needed to have, you know, a 10 or 12 point lead at halftime to bank on for that second half. Yeah, and, and they only go into the half uh, really with uh, not much of space between them and St. Louis and right here again the freshman Yuri Collins the dime and then this guy uh, he looks like a defensive lineman long arms uh, active agile uh, one of the most physical imposing forces in college basketball again it's just uh, really impressive to see him operate on the defensive and offensive glass uh, one more rebound, he'll have 10 in this one. And the 2020 game, it was the first for the Billikens in nearly 30 years. A whistle with 4.11 to go. And a foul will be on Perkins, his second. And that'll put Hamilton to the line, the 6'4 senior. Coaching staff has an opportunity to get out and enjoy some great Italian food in the North End after the game because they're not flying until about 8.30. So they've got a window. You know as well as I do because you played here what a great place that is to go and grab some Italian after the game. It's, it's among the best restaurant cities in the world. Well, the problem I have with it, there's too many options. <laughs> right. Wait, See, sometimes that's a good thing, and then sometimes that's a bad thing. And because you want to, you want to try them all. I know yeah, exactly what you mean. You know, and it's uh, there's so many options here, and again, it's uh, great for these teams when they go on these trips, these road trips, uh, get a chance to see uh, different cities, uh, different parts of the country. Yeah, they've also run in St. Louis to some very nice weather here in New England for this time of the year. Late November, temperatures over 60 degrees yesterday. Don't jinx it. Don't I'm talk sure, about it. That, say well, I'm not saying anything not on that word. right there because we'll have a snowstorm coming tomorrow. Right. Just happy Thanksgiving, everybody. 3.49 to go. Yeah, and I think this is great for these young men, again, to get out, uh, see different parts uh, of the country. It's just awesome. And also use it as a recruiting tool as well, too. Again, both these guys, Travis Ford, uh, Coach Marcus Smart. Uh, you look at Jim Christen, he's had. Jerome Robinson come back and speak to guys. Uh, Kai Bowman, obviously, last season now playing uh, for the Golden State Warriors. So, again, it's just nice for them uh, to see other guys that have been through it and gotten to a place where many of these uh, guys out on the court aspire to be. Really great trip, though, for St. Louis. Jimerson lifts, and that's over the top of the backboard. It'll go back over to Boston College. And on Friday, December 6th, it's must-see college basketball doubleheader. Featuring the top two teams right here in the ACC Network. Number one, Duke going to Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech. Then at 9 p.m., number two, Louisville hosting Pitt. Both games available on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Yeah, Virginia Tech looked really good in the Maui Gym Classic. Obviously, pulling off the upset of versus Michigan State. And that's going to be a tough road test for Duke, obviously coming off of the home loss uh, versus Stephen F. Austin. Yep, going to have to come right back at it. Another very tough opponent. Perkins went for the stuff, but no. And it's stuffed back in by French. Rebound and the basket for him. He's piling up the numbers in the second half. And St. Louis leads it 59 to 43. You talk about a recruiting trip. Well, I think a lot of our Viewers know that Travis Ford was a star at Kentucky and he went to a Final Four team. But he coached at UMass. He was head coach at UMass for three years. So he knows this area well. Yeah, this is really kind of a homecoming for him or coming back. And watch out, though, Dave. Right now, again, 
uh, this is a 13-point game, 221 to go. I've seen crazier things happen. Sure. Uh, in the end of games, Boston College doing a nice job trying to somehow claw back into this game. Good one. Some contact, no foul, can't drain it. Rebound back to the Eagles, hoping they still have time. Thornton to press it. Heron got it. Two-pointer to make it 59 to 48. So hold the phone. BC making a run. And a foul against the Eagles, and that'll go against Hamilton to stop the clock with 148 remaining. He'll pick up number one. Now, in their win, St. Louis versus Belmont, uh, they were 9 of 22 from the free throw line for the game. So that's 40 percent. Obviously, this game is going to come down to them making free throws. That number is going to have to improve to close this game out. It's a bugaboo for them because as a team for the year so far, 51 percent. And they are 5 for 10 at the line in this half. And they continue to miss those. This could get really interesting here. Thornton floating in. He'll kick the pass. They'll swing it up top. And it's good. The three-pointer. Hold the phone indeed. 59 to 51. And it's excellent execution by Boston College. Again, defensively, staying sound, coming up with the missed free throw. Heads up play by Thornton. Extra pass. Jim Christen talked about that. We need to make that extra pass be unselfish. Wide open three by Hamilton. And we have ourselves a ball game right now. Jared Hamilton, the senior from downtown. This is an 8 nothing run for BC. To make it an eight-point game, well, they were looking like they were dead and gone on a 21 nothing run by St. Louis when they built up the huge lead, but BC has come storming back. And this is a concern. Again, Travis Ford talked about it. Freshman point guard has played well, and that's not all on him, but closing out games. Again, uh, Boston College, credit them. Don't take anything away from them. They've gotten stopped, and then they started making some plays. Uh, but clearly, uh, St. Louis was in control of this game up until about three minutes ago, and then Boston College was able to get out in transition, and now uh, you have yourself only trailing by eight a minute 33 to go st louis was up by 20 points 57 to 37 still in the lead by eight with a minute 33 showing well free throws and you know if you're boston college right now do you put somebody on the free throw line minute 33 now you still don't need to foul right away but if there's somebody on there that you want to identify to put on the free throw line collision a tie up on the play very scrappy defense here for BC they will keep it on the possession arrow St. Louis will maintain up by eight well, excellent job of Boston College applying the pressure right here freshman mistake by Collins you can't try to dribble through that double team and Boston College came up with almost turnover still will remain with St. Louis but excellent job though by Boston College applying the pressure. And the St. Louis with two fouls to give. Minute 26 to go they'll mop up the floor and you know this that Boston College will put them at the line every opportunity they get. Yeah you said it 51 percent coming into this game last game up below 50 percent. They won that game versus Belmont, but again, uh, that is something that could be Achilles' heel as they get into A-10 play. Uh, closing out games, again, you can ill afford uh, to have that low of a percentage from the free throw line as a team. Did you feel when you were playing and now all these years as you've been a broadcaster that teams can get better at the foul line during the course of the season? Yes and no. I think end of games there's certain guys that just whatever for whatever reason they don't do well under pressure and you can have a 90 percent free throw shooter all throughout the course of the season they get up end of the game and they clank both of them and then you have a guy going up there brick city end of the game and he's cool as ice yeah. and he knocks him down so again uh, i think it depends on the situation i think overall though for st louis 
they stopped doing what got them this lead, which was attacking the offensive glass and then getting higher percentage shots. They've had a few turnovers at these last few possessions as well. Well, it's still time for Boston College here on their home floor. Near turnover, Collins did not travel. It looked like, though, he got away with the travel, but there's a dangerous wet spot right over here. And a couple of players have slipped right on that spot. So here comes the mop again. Yeah, and that's, yeah, right on. It looks like the logo, the Gotham Classic logo, and that's always the concern. Anytime uh, you're playing uh, in one of these tournaments, had a chance to call the Maui Gym Classic as well, too. All the logos out on the court uh, becomes a dangerous situation if there's any type of player sliding on the floor. Uh, you have some wet areas, and uh, that's a dangerous a yeah. scenario right now and it's interesting too huck because we haven't seen it today until now and now all of a sudden everybody is falling over gotham minute 17 remaining and the officiating crew which has really done a fine work all day they're trying to make sure it's safe for play to continue and there is a hockey rink underneath the floor 59-51. St. Louis trying to get it in. Timeout. They'll take the timeout right in front of us to avoid the turnover. So Travis Ford had to have one there. An excellent job of denial by Boston College. Now coming out of this, if you're St. Louis, you want to try to run, run a play where you get something going towards the basket. See if you can get Boston College in a situation where they don't have a safety back. Maybe you can get an easy layup. Uh, but the key thing is you must inbound the ball heads up play uh, not taking a turnover right here Perkins calling the timeout there was nothing open I'll tell you what I would never have guessed six or seven minutes ago that Javante Perkins was going to have to take a timeout to avoid a turnover that it would even matter when they had that huge lead but now it's down to eight I, I agree with you Neither one of us, uh, we thought this game was clearly in hand for St. Louis, but credit uh, Boston College. Again, uh, they changed the momentum of this game with their defensive energy and now with a chance to get back within striking distance. And it was a 20-point St. Louis lead with five minutes to go. It's a 14-2 run for the Eagles. French handing off for Collins. Collins, the pass tipped away. Oh, they're going to call this off of... St. Louis, but that should be St. Louis ball. And hard to see from our angle. It looked like Heron deflected that ball out of bounds, but excellent job again. Boston College. Yeah. Now, again, couldn't see it from that angle right there. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if he touched that ball. Watch the rotation of the ball. It looked to me like it changed. No, it's hard. So? That's hard. Now, I thought that was a deflection with the naked eye. Now, do they have evidence to overturn it? Is it conclusive? And that's the key. I don't think it's conclusive. Again, the referee's standing right there, real time. So he had the best view of it. See, I think that thumb makes uh, contact. Yeah, it's hard. It's not easy. You're no, right. No, that's not that's not as definitive as you would expect right here. Again, it looked like the ball slowed down, and I'm not sure if that's a case of Collins was unsure of making that pass or Heron deflected it. So 110 to go here, and this is gonna be. St. Louis ball, so they do rule that it was a deflection. The inbound for Jacobs. And a foul as they stop the clock with 1.08 to go. Now, there was eight seconds on the shot clock. And I'm not sure if Jim Christian wanted to foul in that situation. Again, eight seconds, uh, you're almost better off trying to get a stop Get it and down then, there. And then, yes, yeah. as opposed to put him on the free throw line. 
Looked like there might have been some confusion whether or not they wanted a foul. Nonetheless, though. Yeah. Jacobs, who makes 75%, he's one of their better foul shooters. But they are 5 for 12 in this half at the line. And they are keeping BC in the game. He made one of two. Nine point lead. Now, if you're BC, you do not need a three necessarily. If it comes off of penetration and kick, then that's fine. But you got to get into your offense quicker. Thorn on the baseline. Getting a shot in the air, Heron. Yes! He hits a three. And a timeout, 60 to 54. 57.4 to go. Dave, it's been impressive to see Boston College operate getting back into this game. Again, that's a well designed play. Patience. They did not rush and force a quick three. Like I said, penetrate, draw two defenders, poor help defense that time by St. Louis. And that's a beautiful pass by Thornton. Heron knocking down the three. Again, that's just excellent execution and the game situation by Boston College. I think you've got to be impressed with their tenacity to climb back in it because they were finished. And to a good St. Louis team, they were down by 20 points with five minutes left in the game, and they're not out of it. Uh, I was ready to start talking to you about your plans tomorrow for Thanksgiving, <laughs> and it seemed like uh, both of it, St. Louis uh, was in control of this game. They had dominated uh, the offensive and defensive glass. Uh, they were getting uncontested layups and dunks and threes, and. Uh, that all changed with Boston College at about the four or five minutes watch. Boy, a big run last two and a half minutes, a 17-3 run for Boston College and the Billikens with an early Achilles heel. We'll see if that continues this season. It's something that Travis Ford talked to you and I about, you know, about an hour before the game. Is, hey, we got to start making foul shots. And that, again, you said it best, Achilles Hill. And if you're Boston College right now, down six, 57.4 seconds to go, that's a long time. So you don't necessarily need to foul immediately. Uh, you've got time to go for a steal or identify who you want to have the ball in their hands and then put that person on the free throw and line. And this pressure is doing good work for the Eagles, forcing some turnovers, trying to bottle up Jacobs in a reach-in foul by Heron. With 56.6 to go, and we'll march to the other end. And see and, if the Billikens can start making them. And, and again, in these end of game situations, you practice it, you get the ball out of the person uh, that you least want on the free throw line. Jacobs, 75%, he's one of their better free throw shooters. Uh, you'd rather have uh, somebody like Hassan French on the free throw line. Jacobs, sophomore from Chicago, all net. With another one coming. Jordan Goodwin back on now for the Billikens. He's had a terrific second half. And Perkins to the bench. And number two now for Demarius Jacobs. And that's about what they do as a team, 50%. Coming up next, Maine against Virginia. This one's not over yet. Long three, that won't go. Tip to Jimerson. And a reach there, 41.4 to go. Looked like a timeout. A timeout. And I'm not sure that Travis Ford wanted a timeout right there. But a timeout was called. And Lee Cassell was talking to Tay Weaver of St. Louis saying, you called a timeout. Yeah, confusion. Uh, definitely confusion by player and coaches in this situation. Again, good trap by Boston College. Can't see him saying anything. And i not sure. I'm, I mean, it didn't look like his mouth was moving in that situation. Uh, typically, in that situation, you can see somebody's mouth moving, yelling, time out, yeah. time out. You would hear something. That was interesting. So they are charged with a timeout with 41.4 to go and a 61-54 lead for St. Louis. And there are no timeouts left for either team. And that's huge. Teddy Valentine with the explanation 
at the BC bench. Oh, Travis Ford did signal for one there. But I don't know how the officials could have seen him. He's not even looking at Travis Ford. He's looking at the player saying he fought timeout. So, again, still a lot of confusion on that last play. And for French, he'll be fouled. 40.6 to go. But when a team has such a deficiency as the Billikens do at the foul line, it makes all the sense in the world to keep sending them there and make them beat you if you're Boston College. But it certainly will drag out the end of the game, no question. And that's the person you want on the line if you're Boston College. Hassan French, again, we talked about his numbers. Dominant on the glass, but this is an area of where he really struggles. Came into this game 34% from the free throw line. And uh, that is his one Achilles heel, if I would say, on his game. Does everything else well. Yep, he sure does. Popovich, the big fella back on for BC, the 6'11 senior. St. Louis has missed six of their last eight foul shots before French nails that one. Thornton and a foul. 36.4 left. And so Boston College to put it in from the baseline. Nobody taking the ball out for Boston College. Hamilton finally gets there. Again, neither team with a timeout. Hamilton's jumper, no. Well short. Nice save by Heron, but he bounced it to Jacobs. Now it's knocked away. Gets free to Hamilton. He throws it away. Very costly turnover. And here's the dunk, the slam by Goodwin. That should just about do it. 19 seconds to go in a 10 point lead. Yeah, and we've had a few dangerous plays right here. Thornton, credit him. He made a nice hustle play on the previous play. But then Boston College turned it right over. And I think uh, that dunk will do it. That will be the nail in the coffin. Uh, for Boston College now valiant effort to get back and make this a game and extend it uh, but uh, really credit uh, St. Louis in this second half see good one there with 20 points 14 rebounds and when they needed him in the second half he showed up in a big way 15 of those points since halftime yeah I really like how he plays and operates again uh, not a flashy player he's not going to be a guy uh, that's behind the back due to legs but uh, like Marcus Smart, his coach, Travis Ford, coached him uh, at Oklahoma State. And uh, he said, look, he reminds me of Marcus Smart. Well, after watching him play today, uh, I think that coach was uh, spot on. Uh, this guy was impressive. You look at the numbers, they don't lie. 20 and 14, an efficient 9, nine of 16 from the floor in 37 minutes. I think the biggest thing, though, for him, uh, the hustle plays. Uh, he did all the little things that added up in the second half for them having this lead. On the bench right now, he's kind of grabbing at his back. 19 seconds to go. As St. Louis tries to push the record to 6-1 and one and drop Boston College to 4-3. and three. Thornton will flip that up there, and he made the shot while drawing the foul. An acrobatic play to get that one up on the iron, and it rolled in. Well, it wasn't a dunk, but this could be... A sports center nominee right here. I'm not sure how he got that one to go in. And again, with the left hand in the first half, he had about two or three runners and finishes in the lane. And they're calling no foul. I thought that was an and one. Sure did. No shot, no basket. So they waved that off as a traveling violation. Oh, wait a minute. No, they're calling out of bounds underneath. Wow, that's a tough break for Boston Foul College. on the floor. That's, that's right. So the foul did come. Popovich from the corner. He'll lift that one, but a whistle before that. 64 to 54. So the foul came on the floor. Now one and one time. So certainly a choppy finish to this one with the way that 
St. Louis gave back so much of the lead, but now they're trying to hang on in the final minutes. Thornton at the line, 18 points, and misses a free throw for the first time. And final seconds ticking away, and Boston College will foul no more. St. Louis comes in, and they will earn a hard-fought road victory. Great effort by both teams, but St. Louis, a two-